in this uh, previous session we started the duality theory and are uh, related to lpp and we i have discussed that how from a given problem two different solutions can be obtained by looking at the problem from two different different perspectives and since the base problem of our today's class is the problem of fodder versus uh, nutrient then i am going to write once again the solution of the two given problems which i solved in the previous session because that two problems need further discussion to understand the qualities of a duality theory or the characteristics of the duality theory so my one of the solutions which i got was that solution 1 or you can write it as lpp 1 that was mean z which is equal to 3y1 plus 2y2 subject to i shall ask all of you to just take the pain once again to write it as i am writing because uh, that will be helpful for you and you will get to know why i am saying this i know some students will follow my instructions properly and some will not now my duty is to tell you what you are supposed to do the rest is up to you now that is lpp2 and the solution was max z is equal to 14 x1 plus 22 x3 sorry that would be 22 x2 plus x3 and subject to 2 x1 plus 2 x2 plus x3 less than or equal to 3 x1 plus 3 x2 plus x3 less than or equal to 2 x1 x2 x3 greater than or equal to 0 now suppose now as i discussed the problem in the previous session and you know the physical system from which the two problems have been derived suppose the physical system is not known suppose the physical system from which the problem have been derived problems have been derived is not known to us and we have been given the solutions on now the experimenter is just declaring that this is the primal problem suppose he is saying that this is the primal problem under consideration and he wants to know that what would be the dual of this given problem so he is asking us what would be the dual of this given problem and this is our job to find out okay primal problem is given how can you find its dual without knowing the physical system okay so that is the problem under consideration so can we do so can we do so since we are not having the dual as our solution so we are erasing this for the time being suppose we do not know it suppose this is not in front of us now can i from can i found this dual problem now can i take this primal problem and find the dual from from it by some rules by some mathematical rules the answer is yes and if it is so what are the steps how can i do so the step number 1 is try to represent try to represent the given primal lpp 
in its matrix form. Try to represent the given primal LPP in its matrix form. So we can write the given problem, the given LPP, which is in front of you in the matrix form as follows. So I'm writing here matrix form. Now I am writing min capital Z three, two, and I can write it as Y1, Y2. You know, this is a row matrix of order one by two, and this is a column matrix, which is of order two by one. So that two can be multiplied. So three into one, Y1 plus two into Y2. So you will get your objective function in this manner. Subject to, subject to, Two, one, two, three, one, one, and write. Sorry, just a minute. Two variables are there only y1, y2. Here, the order of the matrix is three by two, and here, the order of the matrix is two by one. And so the matrix multiplication is possible greater than or equal to 14, 22, and 1. So from here, we'll get 2y1 plus y2, 2y1 plus 3y2, y1 plus y2. And each of these on the left hand side will be equal, I, it will be made equal to the corresponding value on the right hand side, which is 14, 22, and 1, respectively. And lastly, we can write it as the matrix, the vector. Matrices are always sometimes known as vectors. If you have heard about linear algebra, so set of all matrices of any order with respect to matrix addition and scalar multiplication is a vector space. And elements of this vector space are actually called vectors. Okay, so matrices are also vectors. So this vector, is greater than or equal to zero. Indeed, for your kind information, the concept which has been developed in finding, in solving LPP has come out as an application of linear algebra itself. But unfortunately, linear algebra is not taught in MCA course. In some BTEC courses, it is there, but it is very fundamental and very, very useful. If you look, see, any MIT courses on operations research or any courses on operations research that are available in Coursera or online platform, you will see that their approach is quite different. They get many maximum number amount of time. They, they prepare their own syllabus and they teach from scratch. Okay, so since, but here it is not possible because the time limit is short. The syllabus is designed in a kind of uh, way which where uh, in-depth uh, requirements, in-depth requirements are not, uh, in-depth knowledge is not required. They, it's totally application-based and you are just learning the algorithm. Okay, but for your kind information, linear algebra is the base of the operation research. And being an operations research teacher, I have to, say it officially because since i'm uploading the video in the youtube and all over the world maybe some people are watching my videos okay so if they find out that i'm not my i'm not saying it then they may think that okay uh, the teacher is not teaching in it uh, it's not giving the complete information of, of, about the subject matter so I am telling in the class, I'm also telling my helplessness of, for not discussing some proper, some relevant things of the syllabus, which was actually needed to be discussed. So we have got our matrix representation in short. In short, we can write it as min Z, which is 
capital C and Y. Okay, and subject to subject to capital A Y greater than or equal to B and Y greater than or equal to zero. And you very well know that what these matrices mean. This C matrix is the row matrix. I'm highlighting this, you'll understand. This C matrix is this row matrix. This Y is the vector Y1, Y2. This B is uh, this uh, column vector. And this A is this, uh, <clears throat> this matrix of order uh, three by two. Okay, so all the meaning are clear, uh, clearly written. Now, the theory of duality says that, the theory of duality says that, which I'm going to write in step number two, the dual, of the primal LPP, which is of the form, which is of the form. Now this is the prime. This is the uh, dual LPP. You know. So let us name this LPP as. Uh, say for example, I'm writing it as. LPP number A. So the dual of the primal LPP A, which is, oh, sorry, which is of the form A is given as follows. So I'm going to write the dual now, first of all in matrix form in the next page. Okay, so I'm going to write the thing on the next page. I hope that you have already copied. So this is my LPP B and you know the dual in, in the dual min becomes max or max become min. So I will first write max. And you also know that the variable in the objective function, that variable also changes because in the pre according to the problem initially it was cost then it became selling price so i will put another variable w and now we have this in front of us what we'll consider we'll first in place of c we'll replace we'll place the transpose of the matrix b so the net contribution per unit contribution vector in the primal will be replaced by the transpose of the requirement vector net per unit contribution per unit contribution vector in primal will be replaced by transpose of the requirement vector point number one okay <clears throat> And then I'm going to count how many, uh, how many uh, constraints are there? Uh, how many constraints are there in the primal problem? Because that would be the number of variables in the dual problem. And you know that in the primal problem, the number of constraints is three. So we will get another set of variables, which we name by capital X. I'll write its, their names explicitly in the next uh, stage of the problem. 
subject to the coefficient matrix A, which was written over here, we will take its transpose. Capital Y will be replaced by X. Capital Y will be replaced by X. Greater than symbol will become less than or equal to symbol. And here it was capital B. We shall write here C transpose and vice versa. And lastly, we'll write x greater than or equal to zero. So this is the formula of writing the dual from the primal problem. You can consider this to be the formula. Now let's see if I explicitly write, uh, ex ex explicitly calculate the things, what comes from the given solution. Here, capital B is 14, 22, 1. Here, capital C is 3 and 2. Capital X is x1, x2, x3. Capital Y is y1, y2. Now, let's see what is coming. So we write max W, B transpose means 14, 22, 1, multiplied by the vector y1, y2, which gives you fourteen. sorry, multiplied by x1, x2, x3, which gives you 14x1 plus 22x2 plus x3, subject to put A transpose. A transpose means, oh, I didn't write A over here. The A matrix was 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 1. So A transpose will be 2, 2, 1, 1, 3, 1. That would be multiplied by Y, uh, sorry, X. Lesser than or equal to C transpose, that is 3, 2, which implies 2x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 less than or equal to 3. x1 plus 3x2 plus x3 less than or equal to 2. And lastly, we get x1, x2, x3 greater than or equal to 0. Now you see the problem which I have got by applying the formula of the of finding the dual problem gives me the exact solution which we obtained from the solution directly by considering the physical system <coughs> so therefore this is how the dual of a given lpp is found now you apply the same theory which i have discussed here on the solution problem, that means on, on it, then you'll see that after applying this formula, formula of finding the dual, you will get back the primal problem, which was the question originally.
so that is how without considering the physical system without knowing the physical system if someone declares that this is my primal problem then we can apply the duality theory to find the corresponding dual problem okay but we can later ask the we can be professional and we can supply the uh, mathematical model to the experimenter but it's experimenters duty to let us know what are the meanings of the variables if they do not declare it there is no way of knowing it so i hope you have understood uh, how we actually find the what is the connection between a primal and the dual problem and how to find one from the other in the next page i am going to discuss what happens when equality symbol is there and first of all we will try to know this so i am giving you a question just from from my mind and it is as follows find the dual of the following suppose it is given that max z1 is equal to 2x1 plus 2x2 subject to subject to x plus x1 plus x2 equal to 1 and x1 comma x2 greater than or equal to 0 i am considering a very simple problem because i am considering it just to let you know what happens happens to the equality so very simple problem i have considered oh one more thing that i need to discuss is that now you see that this dual problem this dual problem contains two variables and you can easily find the solution using graphical method but this but the primal the uh, sorry the primal problem contains the number of variables which is two and you can easily solve it by prime uh, graphical method but the dual contains three variables then you need to apply the simplex method to solve it so the number of variables in the two it are actually changing so therefore graphical method simplex method both are very important for solving the system of equations okay system of inequations now this is a very simple problem i am considering just to let you know what happens to equality symbol first of all what you need to do the point is if equality is present convert it into inequalities inequalities i am writing equalities in plural equalities in plural what does it mean now try to recall one of your earlier knowledge about the real number system the real number system says that if a b b two real numbers such that a less than or equal to b and b less than or equal to a this implies a is equal to b and it is a double implication probably you have seen it in the in your school curriculum it's a very important very important result so we can apply this fundamental result to the given problem so first of all in step one we are going to rewrite the equation uh, rewrite, rewrite the lpp as follows so first of all we will write max z1 is equal to 2x1 plus 2x2 subject to
now I'm going to apply this real number theory. We will write this and this. And lastly, we will write x1 comma x2 greater than or equal to zero. This is my step number one. Point number two is that if the problem is of maximization types type, try to write all constraints with lesser than inequality symbol. Okay. And if any symbol is not of lesser than inequality type, convert it. If any symbol is not lesser than inequality type, convert it. So according to this, I'm going to write step number two. Objective function will not change. subject to x1 plus x2, this is less than or equal to one, no problem with that. But the second one is greater than or equal to, so we'll convert it into, into less than type. What we can do, how can we convert it? We can, we can div, uh, multiply both the side by minus one and it will convert the inequation greater than equality into equal, less than equal to. So we can write it as minus x1 minus x2 less than or equal to minus one. It is also a real number theory, which says that a greater than or equal to b, if then, no, I must write, uh, okay, a greater than or equal to b, then minus a is less than or equal to minus b. Okay, so I'm writing it in this manner. And then you can write that x1, x2 greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Now all the inequalities have been written with lesser than types. Now we are going to apply what we have learned in the previous page. Okay. So what will, I, what will you do? You are going to write the system in its matrix form. Step number three. So we'll write max Z one, which is two, two, X one, X two, subject to, One, one, minus one, minus one, x one, x two, less than or equal to one, minus one, x one, x two, greater than or equal to zero. After that, you can apply the formula of dual, dual problem. So it is step number four max will become mean in place of z1 you bring z2 a new variable now in place of this you will put transpose of the requirement vector that is one minus one so we shall put one minus one since there are two constraints two variables will be considered so y1 y2 we can write subject to subject to the coefficient matrix transpose will be written multiplied by the variable lesser than inequality will change into greater than equality one minus one 
Now, in place of one minus one, I am going to write the transpose of the part unit contribution, which is two comma two, and y one comma y two can be written as zero, greater than or equal to zero. Now, quickly take the screenshot of this page, and I am going to do the rest in the next page. I hope you have taken the screenshot. Now, step number four is. Now we shall do the calculation. So we'll write min z two as y one minus y two subject to. Y one my Y one plus Y two greater than or equal to two minus Y one minus Y two greater than or equal to two and Y one. comma y2 is greater than or equal to 0 let me check okay so we have got this we have got this now from there you see that uh we can further simplify it to write mean z2 which is equal to y1 minus y2 subject to subject to y1 plus y2 greater than or equal to 2 and we can write it as y1 plus y2 less than or equal to minus 2 y1 comma y2 greater than or equal to 0 if you wish if you want to write it in terms of mixed inequality containing both greater than type and less than type so we can do it i am just one give me one minute i am actually rechecking my calculation just to check if everything is in proper in its proper place or not So it is two x one plus two x two subject to have changed it. Okay, no problem. Then next z one is two x one plus two x two subject to we have changed the inequalities to that. After this, we have written this in its matrix form with transpose of the requirement vector. Uh, Par unit contribution vector has been written in terms of its matrix form. Requirement vectors have been written in its matrix form. and then we have taken the transpose of that brought two variables y1 and y2 because two constants are present we have considered the transpose of the matrix o o one thing i missed just a minute i have to i actually thought there is i actually felt some doubt in my mind i felt that there might be some mistake i have to consider the transpose of this matrix you see so here i am going to do a little bit change the transpose of the matrix what do, what does it give it gives the matrix will be written in 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 okay in this manner and then you multiply sorry that was the mistake i thought that that, that something is missing it seems something is missing over here so greater than or equal to 2 and y1 y2 is greater than or equal to 0 now you multiply this the thing and what will you get you will get the following so y1 minus y2 which will be greater than or equal to 
Ah, now it is all right. Y one minus Y two greater than. Oh, sorry, this would be two two. What am I writing? Two two greater than or equal to two. Hmm. <clears throat> and Y one, Y two greater than or equal to zero. Y one, Y two greater than or equal to zero. Now you see if. in such a situation we can put y1 minus y2 this vector this this term y1 minus y2 has come into the picture several times so in place of y1 minus y2 we can name another variable which we which we can simply call as y y subject to Subject to y greater than or equal to two and y greater than or equal to two is coming twice. Okay, so you don't have to don't don't have to write this thing twice because only one constant will be enough to write it. Because here also you can write y greater than or equal to two. And here you are also finding y greater y greater than or equal to two, so no need to write the same thing twice over here. And therefore, you can write if you wish that this is happening. Oh, sorry, not like this. Now, obvious, obviously, since Y is greater than or equal to two, so it is quite obvious that Y is greater than or equal to zero. So feasibility is automatically satisfied. Now the root, the well, there is a theorem which says that such a variable. What is Y? What is Y over here? This variable Y is actually has been placed in. It has been put in place of Y one minus Y two. now you see that since y has to be greater than or equal to 0 then you can you should consider that this variable y1 must be greater than or equal to y2 that is an extra condition because otherwise if you consider the variable y2 is greater than variable y1 this non negativity restriction will not be fulfilled so it is an important step that if since y is greater than or equal to 0 this must hold such a variable is called unrestricted in sign okay and there is a theorem which says that the number of equalities in primal is exactly equal to the number of unrestricted variables in dual and vice versa okay so with this i'm going to conclude my today's session okay so i shall upload the video in the youtube and you will get to see uh, it by tonight so i'm concluding i stopping my recording and i'm concluding my today's session with this